This is the CNC Router Tips Podcast, episode number nine. This is the CNC Router Tips Podcast, a show which answers one question from you, the listener, about CNC router tables, CNC software, hardware, web hosting, and business. I'll help you get started in your CNC hobby or business and help you cut through the confusion. Welcome to the CNC Router Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Bill Griggs. Uh, Before we get started with today's episode, I just wanted to take a moment to thank one of my uh, Facebook group members, Sean Fairburn. Sean, thank you. Now, some of you may wonder why I took the time to, to thank one of my Facebook members, but Sean just did me a real big favor that will help future episodes of this podcast, and and I'm not going to spend any more time on that right now. I'm going to do an entire episode talking about Sean and his amazing projects. So let's get to today's question. Bill, I got a question about setting your Mach 3 acceleration and velocity settings in all the axes. And I was also wondering if the A axis and the Y axis settings have to be exactly the same. I know you can't mess with your steps, but anyway, good question for you, Bill. Let me know. Thanks, Albert. That was a great question, and I I think it's not exactly the right question. You may be confused why I'm saying that, but you posted a picture of a sign that you had made with your CNC router, and it had some issues. Um, There was letters that weren't square and sizes that didn't match up or go where you thought they would. And that indicates to me that you may actually have two problems, one with the acceleration and velocity, uh, which is what you ask about, and one with the calibration of the machine. So before I answer your question about the acceleration and velocity, In fact, I think I'm going to make this into two separate episodes so that you'll be able to get the full picture of what's going on in the relationship between the two. So with that in mind, let's talk about the calibration of the machine. A CNC router uh, table has stepper motors, and the stepper motors are controlled or told what to do by a controller software. In many cases, that software is Mach 3, if you're using a Windows PC, or it could be um, Linux CNC if you're uh, using a uh, non-Windows PC. Now, I'm going to talk about Mach 3 because it has more users and uh, I'm more familiar with it than Linux CNC. They're both great softwares. I just happen to know Mach 3. So, in Mach 3, there are calculations that... uh, you determine to tell the machine how far to move. And that has to do with a variety of things, including uh, the lead screw, which are the um, the linear screws that uh, rotate along with the stepper motors. They have a certain pitch, and when they turn one revolution, they go a certain distance. And you need to know that information. Uh, you also need to know how many um, degrees are covered whenever a stepper motor steps one uh, in one direction, one step. And usually uh, that information is written on the end of the, on the end of the stepper motor on the side of it, and uh, it's pretty easy to, to do the calculations. Uh, but you can do the calculations to figure out how far your stepper motors have to go and how many steps in order to move a specific distance. And they call that steps per unit. Now we can calculate uh, how far the uh, steppers have to rotate by doing a series of calculations. First thing we need to know 
is how many uh, screw evolutions per unit you would need. Then we'd have to figure out whether we had rack and pinion or or, um, or ball screw um, would depend on the next set of questions. But, you know, we'd have to calculate the motor steps per revolution. Then we'd have to calculate Mach 3 steps per revolution and then Mach 3 steps per unit and a few others. And each of these calculations can take some time. If you really want, I can tell you that you figure out the screw revolutions per unit, uh, which is equal to 1 divided by the effective screw pitch. Now, how do you figure the screw pitch? Well, you can see this gets to be confusing. So, you could go through and do about a half a page of math, and you could come up with an answer that would be accurate to five or six decimal points. But the reality is, when you're dealing with the wood as your when you're dealing with wood as the material that you're cutting, you're never going to get five or six digits of precision when you're cutting it because wood is active, it's live, it uh, changes with moisture and humidity and changes size. Um, you know, if you've ever cut any wood projects, you know that wood warps and that's part of it. So why drive yourself crazy? There's a much easier way to do all of this. And Mach 3 knew that, and they wanted to make your life easier. So you would go inside of Mach 3, and you would look on the Settings tab. And on that Settings tab, when you click that, it opens up a uh, another screen in the Mach 3 interface. And just above the Reset button is another area that says Set Steps Per Unit. And on the default Mach screen it is very nondescript it's very difficult to see if you don't know to look for it you'll never find it but if you find that button right above the reset button that says set steps per unit and you click it you will be surprised because a window will pop open and it will say pick the axis to calibrate and you can either pick the x y z a b or c axis because Mach 3 can do six axes when you select the axis, you are able to then enter a distance that you want it to move. For instance, if you entered two inches into uh, the window that pops up and then press the OK button, it would start your machine moving on that axis. And so if, for instance, we had chosen the X axis and we said we wanted it to move it two inches, the X axis would move a certain amount. Now, here's the kicker. If you had placed a ruler or a uh, dial indicator or some device that allows you to measure things on that axis before you press the button, you'd be able to look at that ruler and tell how far the machine moved. And because you're going to need that information. So, let's say just for instance that you've been cutting projects that were undersized and when you told the machine to move two inches it actually moved an inch and three quarter well you would get, take that measurement and you would enter it into this the screen that popped up on your Mach uh, 3 uh, when you were setting this and it and ask you how far did it actually move and you'd put in 1.75 and then you'd hit OK then Mach 3 would do all of those calculations that I mentioned before, you know, five or six calculations on the fly in a fraction of a second, and it'll give you an answer, and it'll ask you, does this look right? You know, should I accept this? And if so, if you think that those numbers are accurate, you hit OK, and it resets how far your x-axis will move when it's told to move. And so then you can go back in and you can test it and run it again to find out just how far you've moved. So on the second time, you should be pretty darn close to the two inches that you asked for. Now, to get even finer level of detail, you'd have to use something like a dial indicator or a, uh, um, you know, a test indicator 
and a magnetic mount and put it on your machine and get really fine, fine detail. And you can get it to within a thousandth of an inch easily. So that's the easy way to do the first half of what you need, uh, Al. And I think that was a great question. And um, in the next episode, we'll tell you, a, In actually it will be episode 11, we'll tell you how to solve the other half of this conundrum. Thanks for asking that question, Al. Uh, because your question was featured on the air, uh, you will be receiving a free gift. If you want to do these calculations by hand, I've included them in the show notes. You could go to cncroutertips.com slash zero nine, and that will take you to the show notes for this episode. And it will have enough equations to make even the most jaded mathematician happy. Now, before we finish with this question, I uh, want to give you a couple of resources to look at uh, to help you if you want to go and set up your uh, machine and get it calibrated. Now, the first one uh, is a tutorial that I did on my sister website, themakersguide.com. And uh, if you go there, there's a tutorials tab, and you can just select down through there. And in module one of the tutorials, I have a blog post and a video which explains how to set up your steps per unit. And so you would just go to themakersguide.com and look under tutorials. Okay. And that will get you to the first resource. Now, some of you may not already have Mach 3, but would like to get a copy. Uh, there is a demo version of Mach 3, which is available. And you can get that by going to themakersguide.com slash Mach Demo, M-A-C-H-D-E-M-O. And that will take you to a page where you um, can get a download link to download a fully working copy of Mach 3. It will do 500 lines of code and allow you to test things. Uh, if you decide that you'd like a license of Mach 3, you can just go back to the Maker's Guide and um, uh, look under products for Mach 3 and, um, you know, get a copy. You also have the opportunity to sign up for a mailing list with tips and tricks on how to use Mach 3. So that um, that should help you out. There's also a video on YouTube if you want to search for setting steps per unit. That will bring you to the video. I often mention many different types of software during the episodes and hardware and cutters and it can get a little confusing. So what I did was I put together a page on my website, cncroutertips.com slash resources. And on that page, I list all sorts of resources there from books to tools to uh, software, um, all the things that I use that make my CNC experience better and easier. And I hope you'll check it out. So again, it's cncroutertips.com slash resources. Now, if you'd like to have your question featured on the air, here's how. Need help? Ask me about your CNC router question on my podcast, the CNC Router Tips Podcast. I'll be glad to help or try and get you the help you need. I want this podcast to be a fun and personal experience for everyone and helpful. So let's keep it real and ask sensible questions. Please use common sense and show courtesy to everyone. That way everybody wins. Here are some guidelines to ensure that your question is qualified to be featured on the show. Please keep your questions under one minute in length. If it goes a little over that, that's fine, but um, don't ramble. If you have a website and URL, you're allowed to share it, but only once during the recording. Spammy or disrespectful or deeply private questions will not be considered for the podcast. If you need to ask more than one question, just make each question a separate voicemail. Thanks again, everyone, for uh, tuning in and listening to the CNC Router Tips podcast. Uh, if you'd like to join our free mailing list, you can go to cncroutertips.com, and there's a link right there on the uh, top of the page, which tells you how to do that. Thank you so much, and have a great day.